top end of the funnel how do we do it right how do we get traction at the top end of the funnel first because a lot of people they even struggle at that uh, which is okay right uh, so again what you're going to do is you're going to look at month by month right and you're going to look at uh, an array of different in, uh, you know tactics that you can use potentially uh, on the other hand you know the campaigns will be integrated for example if i'm talking about sales training as a use case as an lms provider then most of these will be for that period talking about sales training use case right so very integrated very coordinated campaign across the board no matter what channel you are using right if you're doing social media posts they are talking about sales training if you're doing email blast uh, with with a, with the infographic they're going to talk about um, you know uh, sales training in that case right uh, if, if you are doing uh, if you're sending a video that will be highlighting sales training if you're sending a customer case study that will be talking the same thing right your webinar will be focused on the same topic with the customer maybe ideally joining you right uh, so you're going to do a very integrated campaign on any given period right and you're going to pick and choose what tactics are relevant for each one of them that's number one and number two make sure that there is content variability why do we all go on facebook there is just too much content variability every time we go we expect something new right so so what 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 takes us to facebook or wherever it is right is the content variability right if we always continue to send them infographics it's boring right um, you know if we always send them uh, you know a blog it's boring it has to be a combination of these activities some low touch some high touch right some low involvement some high involvement for example a blog they can quickly look at it and say yeah i got some value done right um, a two three minute video again a different um, modality infographic different modality webinar uh, you know high uh, high value but high engagement also uh, there are you you need a combination of high value uh, high engagement low engagement right and, and different modalities uh, so that there is enough variability in the content the variability in the content also needs to be in terms of the use cases or applications of what you offer right uh, so that again with different people different use cases or applications will resonate right uh, so that's what you need to do and, and once they become an opportunity once they become an opportunity you have to track client by client right uh, every week by week what, what are we going to do with client one right what are we going to do with client two uh, depending upon the stage of the funnel right depending upon the stage stage of the funnel client one maybe you're just following up to get a meeting client two you already got a meeting and you're, you're doing a demo and you have to have your internal metrics for example you know your metric could be i'm going to do uh, you know even if you're an early stage founder uh, startup and one founder trying to sell and everybody else is trying to build and help you right your goal could be i'm going to do at least a demo a day right so so that means you're bringing enough people week in and week out month in and month out to a stage where you know uh, you are doing five six demos a week that means you are bringing enough people at that stage and now you know which one of them if you are asking right qualifying questions now you know which one of them actually are opportunities so what it means is you are converting at least a couple of them every week maybe three of them every week into opportunities that's not bad if, if it is just one or two person doing it right and of, of course if you, if you scale once you have funding and all that you just replicate that model and scale that beyond that right uh, so you need to have your internal metrics uh, like you know what we need right you also need to and, and once that part of the funnel kind of starts flowing well you also need to say okay per week or per month how many clients are need to close right uh, how, and, and so those all should tie into the objective strategies and tactics that you came up with in the beginning so i need to close if i need you know uh, 20 25 customers uh, you know at the end of the year that means every quarter i need to, I need to close five right uh, that means every month i need to close maybe a, one, one one and a half right <laughs> however the math works um, and, and, and in order to get there what is my conversion rate from the opportunity stage my conversion rate from from the opportunity stage and initially you won't have enough data but you will have to go with some industry standards and then as you get more and more data you will know what your real conversion rates are right for example you know if i have eight uh, deals in opportunity again it, it depends upon the timeline when they are going to close but maybe i'll close one or two of them right uh, next month and so forth so you will start getting predictability in your framework right because again once you're messaging and positioning is done and once your strategy is clear 
this is a very operational game. This is a very operational game. You have to execute, right? You have to execute and you have to really watch each stage of the funnel. And you have to really watch, is it tying with the revenue objective that I have, right, uh, or not? And, and, and if, I'm, if I'm somewhat failing, what do I do? Right? How do I kind of tweak that? How do I continue? So, so, I mean, you will discover many things like many startups do. You will discover things like, okay, now my price point is $5,000 or $10,000 annual, right? And so for that, I have to actually sell a whole lot of people and my cost of sale is pretty high, right? Which is not gonna work in longer haul, right? Simple. Uh, so, but you also learn a lot of other things from the customer as you continue to talk and you build the next package and you build the next package and you test it and you realize, oh, now for the gold package, they're willing to pay $50,000, right? And for platinum, they're willing to pay $100,000. And not everybody wants gold and platinum, but a decent portion of them wants that. So you are also able to increase your ASP down the road, right? You are able to increase your average selling price down the road as you continue to learn. From that process right uh, so all right so uh, some simple techniques people use right uh, uh, for uh, if you don't have sophisticated tools uh, right like you know you have excel just have three tabs hot warm cold and and things are interchangeable what is hot today can become warm tomorrow or become cold and what is cold today can become suddenly hot uh, and that is possible only when your uh, nurture campaigns are continually sending them high value message you know over the period of time because then you are top of the mind when the need becomes real and when there is a budget they think of who you why because they heard from you through some high quality campaign they didn't hear from others they didn't hear from others that's why uh, several cold deals suddenly become hot right because they have seen you they have met you before and then went dormant and then came back right uh, and, and again how do we determine which is hot and which is not right uh, so so one is uh, you know there are three four things you have to look at one is the recency of the engagement always is the factor you have that recency bias and and rightfully so because you just talked and it was a great conversation and you know uh, all the qualifying questions seem to have you know resonated well but then what you really watch for is okay after that meeting are they still engaged? Are they responding to your emails or calls in a fairly regular basis, right? Uh, so the frequency of engagement becomes very, very important, right? Because you, uh, if, if they are not responding after multiple follow-ups, you start realizing there is something fishy going on there, right? Um, uh, size of the deal, right? Size of the deal. Again, do they have budget? Size of the deal. And then what timeline they are giving for closure, right? Even if all of this is good and they are saying nine months or 12 months from now, uh, I won't be able to characterize that as a hard deal, right? I won't be able to characterize that as a hard deal, right? So, because again, it doesn't help me this quarter or next quarter, right? Uh, it is, I will continue to nurture them. I will continue to, you know, stay in touch. I'll continue to work the deal, right? Work the deal. Um, but again, this is how you, you kind of make them in different buckets. And you will have three buckets, and, and I just put deal one, deal two. So, but you will have real customer names. And you are, you're kind of continuously every week checking uh, this uh, sort of uh, pipeline, right? Checking this pipeline and looking at, okay, oh, this one is now showing more traction. Let's move this here. But this one is kind of gone dormant. Let's move here or maybe let's move here, right? So you're constantly checking. And then you are also, since you have put a dollar value, you are able to quantify your total pipeline. And you are also able to quantify your hot pipeline, okay? Uh, so if, let's say I have $10 million total pipeline uh, and my hot pipeline is $3 million. Not bad. So how much I need to close now, right? From the hot one. Um, uh, let's say I need to close a million dollars, right? So so then you start getting a clear sense of, is this realistic? 